Auto lenders fear worsening economy will result in more bank fraud at dealerships. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with Amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Auto lenders in 2023 are increasingly concerned with fraud and loan default risk, which could hurt banks' bottom lines. And many of the largest banks are largely pulling out of the auto lending business by focusing on prime credit car buyers only. So car loans will only get tougher to obtain for lesser qualified buyers throughout the balance of the year. First, more info on the fraud concerns. Auto lenders polled by artificial intelligence and data provider Point Predictive for its 2023 auto lending fraud survey fear worsening economic conditions could push loan fraud and defaults higher this year. The survey showed 70% of auto lenders are preparing for a declining economy this year when compared with 2022. Another big concern was that fraud was on the upswing. One in four lenders surveyed said they were not currently tracking fraud as soon as it occurred, with 35% of lenders saying their frontline employees, underwriters looking at the loans before they are funded, are not trained or prepared to properly investigate or identify fraud. Mm. Well, that's not such a good good. thing as concerns about fraud loom on the horizon. It's almost like they're leaving the door wide open. About 30% of lenders reported using the U.S. government's fee-based electronic system called ECBSSV to confirm borrowers' social security numbers are legitimate. The ECBSV launched in June 2020 to help stop synthetic identity fraud. Point Predictive's data consortium has information on more than 134 million loan applications, totaling $2.4 trillion from U.S. dealerships and lenders. Frank McKenna, co-founder and chief fraud strategist for the company, said, there's a lot of credit tightening and a lot more scrutiny happening. McKenna added, lenders are looking at the highest quality loans that they can book, so they're being a lot more careful. That's why you see less volume at lenders, maybe a flight to quality as the market turns. Fraud is part of that. In a recent show we did, we said dealers have one of two choices, offer cheaper prices or go bankrupt. Not only are they facing consumer resistance to paying their exorbitant prices, But banks are cutting a huge chunk of buyers out of the market by eliminating lower credit categories. And it might interest you to know that the majority of people willingly paying for things like crazy market adjustments, big fat dealer fees, and just generally getting snowballed by a dealer, well, these are people who can't afford to be paying those kind of prices in the first place. So true. So if I just described you, the banks are doing you a favor by declining to fund your sky-high car loan. I just got a message this morning about something like this. The biggest fraud concern was income misrepresentation, the survey showed. This is something that dealer finance offices have been infamous for encouraging their customers to do. That's right. Lie about the money they're making and then blame the customer when they can't prove their income and the bank declines the loan. Synthetic identity risk and dealer fraud also were worries. Pay stub forgery is still a problem for auto lenders, the majority of whom said they believe as much as 10% of pay stubs are false or fabricated. Early payment default on auto loans indicates origination fraud, according to 91% of survey respondents. Mm. An early payment default occurs when a loan defaults within six months after the borrower buys and finances a car. Wow. This is confirmed by many people who are monitoring the auto auctions, with many cars being observed to still have the temporary license paper hanging in the rear window. Ouch. Not only do car buyers not trust the majority of dealers, but more than half of lenders surveyed this year said dealer perpetrated fraud is a serious concern. Last year in 2022, incredibly, 10% of lenders said they actually stopped working with 50 or more dealers because of fraud, Point Redictive had reported. Well, good for them. Yeah. The main types of dealer fraud are high levels of identity theft, income fraud, power booking, which we had talked about before. Yeah. Power booking is a dealer-perpetrated lie which inflates the vehicle's value by selecting options or a trim level the vehicle doesn't actually have. That might seem impossible because every vehicle has an assigned VIN with what many believe is an associated trim level, and generally that trim level is specific. But as a result of booking out thousands of vehicles for our viewers, Liz, you have observed that Black Book will list two, three, even sometimes four trim levels for a given VIN. That's correct. That just leaves the door open for fraud. My guess is that available options like that in various car bookouts is what led finance officers to even engage in power booking in the first place. I can imagine a finance officer sitting there trying to get a loan down for a seemingly difficult situation and then seeing a juicy list of trim options available for a given VIN and just clicks on a higher level to maximize its perceived value. 
Boom, give a crook an opportunity, he'll take advantage of it. You got it. I can understand that happening, but I would think in this high-priced environment, any smart banker would look at the information provided and begin thinking, hmm, I wonder why this Ford dealer is letting a Lariat-trimmed F-150 go for a similar price as the XLTs are selling for. Yeah, you'd think that'd be an easy catch. There are a few things that dealers can do to prevent fraud from happening. Before I get into the things McKenna lists off, I'd like to say, it starts by dealer owners taking off the huge pressure they put on their finance offices to get every deal done and get every dime and nickel out of their customer. Yeah. That is the number one motivator for finance officers to commit fraud. And then McKenna also mentions training frontline staff and aligning incentives to ensure salespeople and finance managers are not just incentivized to make sales, but also to stop fraud and use technology. The findings we are sharing are from Point Predictive's December 2022 and January 2023 survey of 38 risk management executives at auto lenders, banks, and finance companies. Those responding to the survey included more than 35 lenders representing subprime to prime originations and captive and indirect providers. Lenders are responding to this year's fraud risk concerns by increasing internal analytics and purchasing new technology. Darren Schlosser, sergeant for the Houston Police Department Auto Theft Division's Vehicle Fraud Unit, told Automotive News that his unit has arrested 147 fraudulent car buyers, not dealers, car buyers, mm. since 2017, who were actively committing fraud inside dealerships. Those arrests prevented more than $7.3 in fraud. Wow. So there you have it, friends. Don't be tempted to start fudging your income numbers, even though the finance officer could be the one suggesting it, because ultimately, you could be the one being held responsible. Yep. Be forewarned, because not only does Sergeant Slosser work with Houston area dealerships to arrest fraud perpetrators, but he travels around the U.S. training other law enforcement and dealerships on how to identify consumers attempting document fraud, identity theft, and synthetic identity. Last year, he did 125 investigations that yielded $8.8 million in fraud attempts. That's entirely from fraud investigations in the Houston area. Interesting, most of Slosser's investigations are at new car dealerships, so not the small mom-and-pop shops like you'd think. Sure. Frank McKenna said, Dealers are so interested in fraud right now, I've never seen anything like it. I think because dealers are getting hit so hard by these identity thieves, most dealers are looking at doing something, training or technology or something. Perhaps, Mr. McKenna, but to be frank with you, I'd recommend looking at the feet of the dealer finance office for most of your dealer fraud concerns. I totally agree. Now, as we mentioned in the beginning, more banks are moving away from the lesser qualified car buyer, and that movement is being led by one of the biggest players in the game, Ally Bank. Detroit-based Ally Financial said it expects to finance fewer car loans this year in the face of an uncertain economy. As one of the nation's largest auto lenders, with $196.2 billion in assets, Ally has typically focused origination efforts on used cars as well as new car buyers who fall in the prime credit category. Ally has been able to maintain deal flow even as it raised buy rates over the past year, but in the first quarter of this year, Ally shifted focus to super prime buyers, mm -hmm. reducing financing costs for borrowers with the highest credit scores. Loans to super prime borrowers have accounted for 40% of originations in recent weeks. This was shared by Brad Brown, interim chief financial officer, on a Wednesday conference call with analyst. A permanent CFO, Goldman Sachs executive Russell Hutchinson, joins Ally in July. Hmm. Pay attention, friends, and keep your hard-earned money close to you and your hand tight in your pocket. Yep. All signs point to the need for financial caution in the months ahead. One final word on this banking slowdown. If you're having trouble getting a bank approval, and after all we've said about economic concerns, you still think you can afford a car payment right now, you should know that credit unions have been the bright spot in all of this mayhem, seeing greater success than banks with auto loans. Yes. So just another reason to add a credit union pre-approval to your car loan considerations like we advised in this video, why a local credit union pre-approval is a must-have for car buyers. Check it out if you missed it. Also, a quick reminder for returning viewers or for new ones just joining us, 
With regard to the all-new hassle-free car buying process we're launching soon, we've created a Google form to help you sign up to get early notification, and responses are automatically loaded into the database for us. There's a question at the end we'd love to hear your feedback on, so please don't skip it. The final question reads, with regards to the current car buying process, please tell us what you like, don't like, how you view the current car buying process, or any other things you wish to see brought to life with respect to creating the ultimate car buying process that would make you say, now this is how I want to buy a car every time. We had to do this because we were just inundated with thousands of responses from consumers wanting a heads up when the launch of this new car buying process was announced. If you haven't already, you may get a message back from me asking you to fill out the short form so I can avoid having to do it manually myself. Thanks in advance for making my job easier. The link to the form will be pinned in our community page here on YouTube. It's also on our website, thehomeworkguy.com. Make sure you go there and fill it out. You're doing a great job of helping us strategically align our launch with your specific wants and needs. And by the way, we'll also pin that link in the comment section down below, right at the bottom of the video. Sure. All right, if you're new here at the Homework Guy channel, it's vitally important that you don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future announcements. Join our fast-growing group of subscribers and become a part of our YouTube family. If you're one of our newest subs, we welcome you. Also, thanks to our many faithful followers for coming back. And to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.